Hello, my name is Johan Bowen. I'm a professor of informatics at Indiana University in Bloomington, Indiana. Uh, I was in Belgium just going off to college when the Berlin Wall fell and it was uh, an event that left a deep impression on me. It instilled in me a hope for a society that would be more free and open and I think that hope to a large degree has been realized. The other kids in school used to tease me in a good nature manner and call me the professor. And the truth of the matter is that even at that age, I did want to become a scientist and a professor. And so I'm happy to say that my childhood dream was actually fulfilled. Um, the, the second uh, dream that I had was to become an astronaut and that hasn't happened yet. But I'm waiting for launch costs to come down and perhaps in the near future I might realize that dream as well. My research tries to break the wall around how we fund science. Most countries now use a system called Grant Proposal Peer Review, where scientists have to compete for funding. They compete for funding by submitting grant proposals to funding agencies. The funding agencies evaluate those proposals by subjecting them to peer review. They convene panels of fellow scientists that then read and evaluate all of the proposals and rank them according to their excellence their quality, their feasibility, etc. And the funding agencies then use those rankings to decide which of these proposals to honor and make grants to the respective scientists to execute those projects. The system, however, is very expensive because it, it forces people to spend a lot of their time, in some cases up to 30 or 40 percent of the time of the researchers spent preparing, writing and submitting proposals, to submit them to the funding agencies after which they have to be reviewed, that means read, and rev reviewed and assessed by panels of peer review, which is also very costly. One of the nice features of the system is that it's very tunable. The donation percentage can be tuned to make the system more equal or mer more meritocracy. Second, the donation interface, or the interface to which people make their donations, can be arranged in such a way that the selection of people have to conform to certain standards. For example, people have to donate as much money to female scientists as they do to male scientists. A variety of societal biases against underrepresented groups can be solved in that manner. The system is very tunable and can therefore ensure that the money flows in an equitable and fair manner that respects the preferences of the entire scientific community collectively. We are proposing a self-organizing funding allocation system. The system funds people, not projects. By doing so, it avoids a lot of the overhead of people having to write and submit proposals, nor do they have to be peer-reviewed. We fund people through two mechanisms. The first one is that everybody receives an unconditional, equal base amount of funding every single year. That takes care of younger scientists, or scientists with very innovative ideas that they can get past peer review. The second mechanism is that scientists are supposed to donate a certain fraction of everything they receive to other scientists of their choice. That can involve logging into the funding agency's websites and making a selection of individuals that they donate their percentage of funding to. These two mechanisms combined ensure that the funding circulates through the scientific community. And as it does so, it converges where the scientific community wishes the funding to go. So the final funding distribution that this system converges to is one, mathematically speaking, that reflects the collective preferences of the entire scientific community, not of small review panels. However, the only way to find out is to actually do it, to actually implement the system. And that can only be done at scale. So this is not, the self-organized self funding allocation is not a system that you can try for 10 or 20 scientists. You have to do it for a large enough group of people so that you have the wisdom of the crowd. Um, and that will take a government or a funding agency to set it aside a considerable amount of money and then to put the system into practice to see whether it works. I always uh, remark uh, that, you know, the worst that could happen is that they don't spend quite as much money in reviewing 
and accepting proposals and that they might end up with a funding allocation that isn't quite optimal, but that is not assured by the present system either. When I talk to friends and colleagues about the system, a lot of them like it because it's obviously very efficient in the sense that people don't have to write proposals and they don't have to be reviewed, etc. Most of the money actually ends up in the hands of the scientists that do the scientific work. On the other hand, there's a lot of questions about whether this will work in reality and whether we can tune the system in such a way to avoid nepotism, abuse, and funding allocations that are not optimal with respect to funding the best science.